Hi, I'm John Mallows. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. On this Thursday morning, hey, the Houston Astros are the world champions. And guess who their AAA affiliate is? That's right, the Fresno Chrisleys. We have a special guest in the house today to talk a little bit about that and much more here on the program today. 436 Me TV Option 11 Connect With Me starts right now. And back here on the program on Connect With Me, of course, on a Thursday morning. And we are going to talk about business because our um, guest today, uh, certainly the focus on him and his family is business. But we're going to talk about the World Series, too, because the Fresno Grizzlies are the AAA affiliate of the Houston Astros. We'll get into that in just a moment. And speaking of sports, tonight at the Fresno Convention Center, doors open at 5 o'clock. You've got five inductees into the Fresno Hall of Fame, the Sports Hall of Fame. One of them, Roger George, David Carr is one as well as Melvin Eli, the former basketball player, of course, uh, in the NBA and Fresno State. So that starts at 5 o'clock. And Roger George was here yesterday talking about his decathlon days with Bruce Jenner in the 76 Olympics. And he spent 13 years as a decathlete, one of the most difficult sports and uh, athletic uh, events that you can compete compete in is the uh, decathlon. Tomorrow we have Doug Vagum as well as um, we have somebody from GV Wire in here, David Taub. He's going to be in talking a lot about the teacher strike and other things going on in the city of Fresno. So that's uh, on tomorrow's program. And then on Monday we have somebody from Habitat uh, for Humanity. Anyway, you're watching us live on Comcast Channel 375 as usual trying to get through this so we can get to the World Series excited that the Dodgers lost. Oops, I think we had just lost some viewers there. Anyway, Comcast Channel 375, 43.6, 13.1, over-the-air broadcast with a digital antenna. It's the outdoor version. 2 o'clock in the afternoon is the replay, 13.6 YouTube, 8 o'clock tonight, 4.6 Biz TV. After that, go to YouTube, uh, our page there, or you can find us on VenturaBroadcasting.com any time of day or night. So, World Series went down to Game 7 uh, at Dodger Stadium. What a terrific World Series. One of the most exciting World Series that I think I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them in the last uh, 40 years or so, dating all the way back to, what, uh, when I first started going to the World Series? 1974, when the A's played the Dodgers. But getting back to this series of 2017, last night the Houston Astros wrapped up their first World Series title ever with a 5-1 victory over the Dodgers in front of that Dodger home crowd. They went home disappointed. I don't know if they have anything to hang their heads about because the Dodgers won 104 games during the regular season. They had a terrific season in entering the World Series for the first time in 29 years. But the big guns on the team were absent. Corey Seager, Cody Bellinger, Justin Turner just didn't get the job done. In fact, Bellinger struck out 17 times during the postseason. Unbelievable. Kenley Jansen, I'll tell you what, game two was the turning point when he couldn't save it. He lost it. Altuve, Bregman, Correa, McCann, these are all household names almost now, at least in the city of Houston. They had thousands and thousands of people last night at Minute Maid Park watching the game on a big screen from Dodger Stadium. That's where the Game 7 took place. Here is the crowd as they went wild after the Astros wrapped it up.
great team win. Shout out to the city of Houston, uh, to everyone who was affected. Uh, this God is great. It's just really great for our city. Shout out to the Dodgers. They're an amazing team, an amazing franchise. But at the end of the day, you guys are still in LA. We had a hurricane. It's so much. It's been what, like what, 1994 since the Rockets won? It's been over 20 years, 22, 22, 23 years. This means everything to our city, and we can't be happier. Houston is, and that we will overcome any adversity, no matter what, and come through graciously and be amazing champions. It's amazing. There's nothing better than today. this win was for us. We we got devastated by a hurricane a few weeks ago and everyone was down on their luck. But the Astros picked us up. They gave us some hope. They gave us something to cheer for. And now we're champions of the world. Yeah. Going wild on the streets of Houston. Live in our studio right now is Lance Cardoza. He's from Business Street Media Group and the public relations and media consultant for the Fresno Grizzlies. In fact, he went to one World Series game down at Minute Maid Park in Houston. He'll tell us a little bit about that and what his role was during this World Series. We had representatives from Fresno down, of course, in Houston and Los Angeles. What a World Series it was for Houston because obviously Hurricane Harvey completely devastated that city. So a lot of people think, you know what, very deserving that the World Series title goes to the Houston Astros for the very first time in franchise history that dates back to the early 60s. And I, I'm old enough to remember uh, when the Houston Astros were not the Astros, they were the Houston Colt 45s way back when, when Joe Morgan was playing for them. So good for Houston, even if they weren't affiliated with Fresno, good for Houston, the fact that they won. You know, it's always next year for the Dodgers, even though they won 104 games. But I got to tell you something, and I, and I want you to call in on this. I know a lot of Dodger fans out there wanting to see the Dodgers win. I believe that was Kenley Jansen, one of the key factors that the Dodgers did not win the World Series. Boy, that uh, game, I guess it was game number two, uh, that Kenley Jansen gave up that home run uh, to Darwin Gonzalez. And that was a key factor uh, in that World Series. Anyway, 436, MeTV Option 11, back with our guest in just a moment. When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the Samsung big screen we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool, and it's a good place to start. But you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Time for that upgrade to an HD 3D web-enabled Samsung TV. 
Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. Back here on the program, 436 MeTV Option 11. We'll have a lot to talk about during the course of the program today, including the World Series. Lance Cardoza is here. Good to see you. Good seeing you too, John. All right. So um, you're the media consultant for the Fresno Grizzlies. You yeah. do media. So what was your, before we get into the World Series aspect of this, uh, what was your role during the World Series? I know you went to Game 5 in Houston at Minute Maid Park. Yep. Uh, wish I could have gone with you. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah, the, when was that? That was on Sunday. That was Sunday night. Yeah. Sunday night. Yeah. And the my my role is uh, on that that weekend was a fan. Uh, I became a fan of the Houston Astros when they came to town, uh, 2015 when they gave me a ring when they became the national champions here in Fresno, uh, under the coach Tony D. Uh, it was it was just an amazing time working for the Fresno Grizzlies. So when the Astros were in it, it was almost a surreal feeling that here we lost the Giants. We were 17 years with the Giants. I always equate it to being married to the supermodel. The Giants were the supermodel. We grew champions. The champions went up to San Francisco and did well. Buster Posey and the list goes on and on. And we did it all over again. So 2015, we get this ring. We get a championship, and it's off to the races. Three years later, the Houston Astros are in the World Series. So well, what was your role throughout that day? Because you, you played a, a business role uh, during the series. What was it? Well, during the series was just here local to home. Local to home was we had watch parties. So we were having watch parties, and the local media was doing stories on the, the watch parties. Okay. At the same time, too, local media, as you can imagine, you're the AAA affiliate of the Houston Astros. And Game 5, if you remember, there were so many guys in Game 5 that were all Fresno groups. Grizzlies players that closed out that game. Bregman for one. Bregman. Alex Bregman, the third Incredible. baseman for the Astros, yeah. only 23 years old. Yeah. And I saw the broadcast last night after the game. They, you know, I think David Ortiz is the one that told him, "You better enjoy this because it doesn't come around all that often. You're 23. Uh, this opportunity may or may not come along again." Yeah. It's it, a rare thing to win the World Series. Rare thing, and such a humble guy. And those guys, like I said, at the end of Game 5, you had Joe Musgrove, you had uh, Bregman, you had Carlos Correa? Carlos Correa, and he came down for about six days and played in Fresno on um, some rehab. Altuve. Altuve, yeah, and they're all great guys. They're just, they're, they love the game of baseball. And it's just not all business to them. When they get on the field, it's all business. But they're, uh, they're like a bunch of little boys that are chasing that dream and that dream to go up and do uh, the World Series for the very first time in franchise history and earn history as the Houston Astros did. It's huge. And to be able to have them right here in Fresno, that's one thing about the Fresno Grizzlies. We've been growing champions. We're a farm-grown system that has been growing champions for well over 20 years. So it's just a... Uh, it's just amazing to have that opportunity to work with them. And again, my role is I'm a spokesperson. I'm a media guy. I, I bring attention to the team where it's deserved. Right. Well, uh, you know, here's the thing. I, I want to roll the videotape and we'll talk over this. There's no sound. It's called Jose Altuve. Let's roll the videotape on Jose Altuve because he could win the National League's uh, most valuable, or American League's most valuable player. You know, he's obviously competing against a guy named Aaron Judge, but Altuve in the playoffs had such a terrific uh, showing. Here he is against the Yankees. Uh, hang on a second. H hang on, caller. Get to you in just a moment here. Um, and Altuve, you know, go ahead. it's funny. You see the two buddies. You've got Altuve. And Correa. And, and Correa, the tallest guy friends, on the right? team and the shortest guy on the team. Yeah. <laughs> and they're best of buds. And uh, it's funny as you see these guys that, again, it's like two guys out on a, a field with a stick and a ball having a good time, rooting each other on. And when you watched even Game 5 with Altuve and Correa and you saw the, the dynamics between Bregman, these guys were coaching themselves. They were wanting it. They were hungry. They weren't letting things get them flustered. They'd right. regroup, they'd talk, and they were hungry. They wanted this World Series, and they earned it. Do you think, because you saw these guys up close and personal, hang on, caller, uh, for Game 5, who seemed like the hungrier team? The Houston Astros. Because I think they could. I mean, could you see it? The electricity, on the, their, their, yeah. Their faces being, as opposed to the Dodger players. Being at home and being in Minute Maid Park, and that uh, it's a retractable roof, and the roof was right. closed. It's a deafening, deafening uh, crowd in there on Game Five. But you could, you and, could see, but I know because I've covered so many major league sporting events over yeah. the course of time. 
you could tell by someone's face and you can look in their eyes whether or not they're hungry. Oh yeah. Do you think just by looking at some of those players looking at that they were hungrier than the Dodgers? <laughs> I would say absolutely. I think How can you tell? How uh, did you tell? Because I have a personal relationship with some of them that I've met being on the field with the Fresno Grizzlies throughout since 2015, we've had different players rotating through and you just see it in their face that these guys wanted it. Now, did they want it more than the Dodgers? No. Absolutely not. The Dodgers wanted it just as bad. But I think when, and even anything, in business and sports, it's very relatable. When it's how you're judged when things aren't good, when things aren't going right, when you were struck, struck out or you missed that catch or you missed that hit, what do you do next? What yeah. happens after that? And that's one thing with the Astros. Every time there was a challenge, I didn't see them sulk. I saw them get hungrier. Right. And Altuve was such a key part of that. He mm. had three home runs in one game against the Boston Red Sox in that uh, in that uh, division uh, playoff series, of course, uh, in Boston. And uh, just, uh, you know, how tall is he? Like five, six? He's, he's, he's not just, a very tall guy. Yeah. He's not a very tall guy, but he hits a lot of home runs. But he's he a giant on average. that field. He's, he's, he's a huge. Giant. Yeah. He's got a lot of speed and he covers a lot of ground at second base. So, you know, it's either going to be him or Aaron Judge winning the most valuable player in the American League. There's no question. Yeah. Let's take this call here. Go ahead, Carter. You're on the air. If you would have uh, told me that Houston was going to get to Kenley Jansen three times in the World Series, yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, we're oh, here. Yeah. Uh, if you would have told told me that they were going to get to him three times, because remember he came in in the eighth inning in, in game two, gave up a single, and it was three to two, and then they tied it up with the home run, and then won the game. I know that's so he, when Darwin Gonzalez hit the home run in game two. That's the first time they got to him, and yeah. I, well, I think well they actually got to him back in uh, inning number eight too. He came in with a guy on second base, and he gave up a single, and it yeah. became three to two because he had a three to one lead. I know, but the but the home run by Gonzalez was really yeah. the backbreaker. Yeah, that was, you know, and then uh, if you would have told me that Clayton Kershaw was going to blow a four-run lead and then immediately blow a three-run lead after that. Yeah, that was Sunday night, I believe. Yeah. And then they were going to get the Jansen again in the 11th. They said, no, that's just something that Hollywood would have written. Yeah, and then, and then right after that caller, the bats came alive, and Kershaw, I mean, you could see it, the look in his eyes as he's sitting on the bench yeah. thinking, oh, no, what's happening? Hey, and caller, i got to tell you something. Uh, do you comment off this? I mentioned Cody Bellinger uh, during the, the course of the playoffs struck out 17 times. 17 thought, times. Cody Bellinger. Did, no, wait a minute. Didn't he strike out 17 times just in the World Series? He may have. Yeah, I think it was 17. Cause he 17 had times in the World times. Series, yeah. But but here's the thing. He had 39 home runs during the regular season. But that but they figured him out. They figured him out. Just throw that breaking ball down and in. And he kept swinging right over the top of it yeah. most of the time. So, yeah. All right. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. But, uh, it's amazing that the Dodger collapsed by some of the bats. Uh, Bellinger for one. Uh, Seager for another. Justin Turner, I think, got hurt. Uh, on a ground ball to third base. I forgot what game that was, but he hit his, his left knee, and he never was the same yeah. after that. And how about Springer? Springer. Yeah, George Springer. Springer just was coming alive, you know, and he's been, and it was classic. What was it, 2014 Sports Illustrated? Uh, they to predicted. Me, they predicted. I to me, that. they took sort of a jab at the Astros. <laughs> they were saying, Astros, you can't win a game. But, well, uh, they weren't really serious. Yeah, they didn't think it was going to happen. It, they was, didn't a, think it was almost so. like a joke. Okay, 2017, you're going to win the World Series. Now they're acting like they really predicted it. Yeah, well, I know. Now they're taking, uh, they're but, taking all the credit. But when we got the Houston Astros, we being the Fresno Grizzlies, we had a press conference, and I organized this press conference. And I represent the Back to the Future car, the DeLorean. It comes over from the coast, and we have it go to different events. And we were going to have the Back to the Future night of the Fresno Grizzlies as one of the promos. So our GM, Derek Franks, we just got with the Astros. We designed a World Series ring for the Astros. And we had him get out of the car, smoke and fog and the lights, and said, hey, we're with Houston Astros now, and I just went into the future. And they showed the Sports Illustrated cover and said, in 2017, Sports Illustrated was right. We become the World Series champions. 
and our GM, Derek Franks, got in so much trouble with Houston. Reed Ryan, Nolan Ryan's uh, son, had said, hey, the pressure's on. You know, our coaching staff is like, what's Fresno doing? And we had such a good relationship with them that we retracted some of the tweets and everything out there. But the sports world went crazy. We reignited yeah. that fire of 2014. You know, but here it part is. Part of this was the fact that Hurricane Harvey inspired some of these players, too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just surprised at um, the collapse of uh, Seeger, Bellinger, and Turner. And then, like the caller said, and I pointed out in the monologue, uh, regarding Kenley Jansen, uh, they got to him at least twice, big time, and then again last night he comes in yeah. uh, early. I think he came in in the seventh inning last night. And I'm going, wow, it's amazing. So, it's, it's tough. It's tough. You know, when you sit there and say we're we're behind a desk and he's the callers on the phone. These guys are professionals and they're ball players, but it's hard to know what that feeling really feels like when you're there in the game. I was talking on my radio show. I was talking to our pitching coach at the Fresno Grizzlies, Dyer Miller. He's been in professional sports his whole life. Uh, he was there in game three and four. And I was talking to him about that experience, that heat as a pitching coach or as a pitcher in a game like that. What's going through your mind? And it's a surreal feeling. You don't feel like you're actually there, but you're in that game. But at the same time, that pressure has got to be uh, a mountain on your back. So it's tough when you're in that spot and you're fighting for that series, um, especially when you're Houston. You've never had one. This is your opportunity to come off the cusp of, Hurricane uh, Harvey. Well, these Dodgers, yeah. these current Dodgers, have never had one. They yeah. never had one either. They the never had one. The last one was uh, yeah. '88. So the pressure, the pressure is the same on both sides, but it's, it's uh, who rises to the occasion at that time and gets that hit, makes that pitch, gets that catch, makes that run. You know, yeah, it all happens. I, I mean, I mean, you know, you talk about hunger. I got to take a break here. Four, three, six, me TV option eleven. You talk about hunger in a, in a player or a team that wants it more than another team. I think. I think a lot of times, too, um, besides entering, uh, you know, that factor into the equation, you have to take into account which team is more confident, which team has negative thoughts exiting the brain instead of entering the brain. Because uh, I'll talk about that on the other side. 436 Me TV option 11. Trying to stay positive during a game like that is very difficult unless you're up by, what, 10 to nothing. Back in a moment. Want to create something extraordinary? Create perfection. Our lifestyle appliances make it easy. KitchenAid, Ventura TV Appliance, and you, when only the best will do. The following is another list of things you will not hear on MeTV programs. Man Cave, Baby Bump, Whatevs, Double Half Calf Mochaccino, Full Hawk, Redonculus, Totes Adorbs, Hella, Hala, YOLO, Cray Cray, and MeTV is still Kardashian free. This is what you will hear on MeTV programs. Welcome, Dana. The Twilight Zone. What about the Bulls? I object, Your Honor. Mr. Grant. I hear you right. You heard me right. MeTV. Thanks for listening. You know, yesterday Roger George was here on the program. He is going to be entered, or they're going to enter him and his name into the Fresno Sports Hall of Fame tonight at the Fresno Convention Center. And one of the things that Roger said, and you can read his article in the B, uh, he wrote it yesterday, every Wednesday in the sports section. Roger writes a fishing column. And one of the things that he said, the key to success, because uh, he did, he did um, you know, he was close to Bruce Jenner at the time, 1976. Um, one of the reasons that Jenner was so successful and he won the gold medal as a decathlete in, in that games in Montreal is the fact that, and this goes, this holds true in anything in life, is you don't let negative thoughts enter into your brain during a game. It's complete focus. Everything else you shut out, no matter what's going on around you or what's going on in the world, you shut that out in only positive thoughts. And i got to tell you, Lance, one of the things I heard, uh, one of the key pickups for the Houston Astros during the, off se or during the uh, summer season, uh, right after the All-Star break, I think it was August 29th was the deadline, or 30th, um, was the pickup of Justin Verlander, the starter uh, for Houston. And he said after, uh, during game two, um, 
he went in and, and talked to the players in the dugout during the game. I heard him say this last night. He says, come on, guys, you know, I've been here before. We can do it. You guys are the best offensive team in baseball. You can hit this guy, Kenley Jansen, or whoever out there was out there pitching. You can hit this guy. We can come back and win this game, and they did. So how big a factor was Verlander, who is a, what, a 14-year veteran, yeah. With a mix of these guys like Bregman, who's a very young guy, 23 years old, mm -hmm. and yet a mixture of young and old. I think, and like you said, at the negative thoughts, uh, that when you're in that position, even during the game, a negative thought, you gotta, that's done, it's over, move on. And I think with Verlander coming in and giving them the pep talk, and a lot of times in the major league sports, the guys are just about themselves. You know, they're they're just focused on their career, focused on what they're doing. But this team rallied, this team pulled together. And not to say the Dodgers didn't too. I mean, they yeah. were rallying and pulling hard too, but the Astros were hungry. They wanted it. And those pep talks, when things didn't go right, I would see that bench come alive and say, hey, we can we can regroup, we can do this. Yeah, and you remember uh, 2012 and 14 when the Giants won the World Series, uh, they had um, a, a guy who inspired them uh, on the bench. His name was Hunter Pence. Oh, yeah. You remember that? Oh, yeah. All those Pence. pep talks he had in the dugout and in the clubhouse. And they would rally, and they'd, they'd get into a circle and start jumping up and down. Yeah. Pence would get them fired up. So yeah. Verlander was the Hunter Pence of 2017 to a certain extent, right? Yeah, and the veteran that they all look up to. And, and they tend to uh, – baseball tends to be – they look at the past and out of respect of the who laid the groundwork for what the game is today. So they look at guys like that. When the guy comes in like that and doesn't have a, an attitude of he's great, but an attitude of we can and as a team and get them all fired up like that, that's that's awesome. Because you would see it through the younger guys too, like the dynamic between Carlos Correa and Altuve. We were talking during the commercial break. Just that relationship there is infectious amongst the rest of the team. Bregman, a young guy, he's looking for uh, mentors and they were mentoring each other through this process and they were hungry and they fought for it but when things weren't right is when they would get fired up even more yeah so it doesn't matter on paper I mean Dodgers had three of the best hitters in baseball they had the best middle relief pitching in baseball uh, arguably they had the uh, best reliever in baseball in Kenley Jansen who's this monster of a guy he's what six foot seven or something <laughs> like that he's as big as Aaron Judge yeah and and they still couldn't they still couldn't get and arguably they had the best manager in baseball right now yeah. in Dave Roberts. Yeah. But a lot of people would say, well, what about AJ Hench? Yeah. With uh, with Houston, he's probably the best manager right now, and they're good friends actually. I saw a meme, and a meme is a picture with text on it. I'm sure you know, but for your viewers too, and the meme came out and had Tommy Lasorda talking to somebody I can't remember, <laughs> and he's hugging him, going, "Nothing matters. It just matters what you do tomorrow in Game Seven. That's all that matters." Right. That, and that's such great advice. Nothing else matters. Yeah, doesn't matter how cares. good you are. Doesn't no. matter what you've done or what you did wrong. It only matters what you do tomorrow. No, that doesn't it. matter yeah. that Bellinger had 39 home runs during the season. It all goes out the window. It's this yeah. one game. That's all comes down to tomorrow. And uh, that yeah. meme went out everywhere. And uh, yeah. I have, as a kid, growing up in California, went to my first baseball game. You remember the first stadium experience? It was at the Dodgers. I actually, you know, okay. they do, uh, you go visit uh, city and farm families mix and you go stay. Yeah. I forget what program it was through school. I went and stayed with a family in L.A. and they owned the ambulance company. And I actually got to sit in the ambulance and watch a Dodgers game. Got my little Dodgers helmet. And as a kid, I was just a total Dodgers fan. I loved the Dodgers. Yeah. And working in this business, I just fell in love with the Astros. Yeah, I felt uh, very lucky and fortunate during my career because as a member of the media, the very first World Series I ever went to, I was a young young kid, uh, 1974, uh, it was the A's and Dodgers uh, at the Oakland Coliseum. And I actually remember who pitched in that game. It was Catfish Hunter pitching for the oh, A's in game cat. three. It was a Tuesday night, yeah. I remember it. Uh, and all the biggies were there. I mean, it was amazing to see that very first World Series game I had seen uh, as a member of the media in person. That goes back a long way, but a lot of Dodger fans in the Central Valley heartbroken today. Oh, yeah, very tough, very tough day, but they fought hard. They fought hard, and, and they tried to bring everything they had, but uh, it just didn't happen. Okay, but here's the thing I have to ask you. Okay, I'm going to give you some negative thoughts to yes, think about. Yes, give me How's some that? negative thoughts. <laughs> How is this going to help 
our franchise here, the Fresno Grizzlies. The franchise, uh, the fr how's it going to help Fresno yeah, Grizzlies? Yeah, how will it help? Because we know uh, right now, yeah, yeah, look, let, let me just give you a couple of negatives, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the team's been for sale for a long time. We know they're yeah. losing money. We wish they would draw better crowds. Uh, we wish people, more people would come downtown to see the games because it is an exciting place to see a game. Grizzly yeah. Stadium, one of the best minor league parks in the country. Mm -hmm. But it's it's like this cloud hanging over our heads uh, to a certain extent. Like, what's it going to take to get over the hump there? And and where what's the status of the sale of the team? So, and as is, most people know that follow the story, the status is it's, it's in process. It's happening for the very first time that there is a new potential owner. So that's already been out in the media. Not been, not been finalized. Nothing's, nothing's yeah, official. Chris was here a while yeah. back, and he said nothing, nothing's finalized. Nothing's official, but I can tell you that uh, the progress is moving fast and, yeah. and fierce. And what a great relationship that the city has had with the Grizzlies over this past couple years during the time when Chichancy had their problem. And that was during the time that the 17-year relationship with the Giants was changing. That's when I came in. Yep. And one of the big things that I talked with our general manager that Chris appointed at that time, Derek Franks, is we need to become the Fresno Grizzlies again. For years, we were married to that supermodel that moved on, and we have a new relationship. But we need to become who we are, who we originally became when we started in 1998. We're the Fresno Grizzlies. First, what is it going to do to our franchise that we're the Houston the Astros? Series. The World Series. What will that do for this yeah. franchise here it, in Fresno? To, to me, to me, it's great because you're going to see again, just like we did for 17 years with the Giants, that we grew these champions. More champions are going to be coming through the system, and you be able, you're able to get close and personal with these guys and be able to see their career progress. It's exciting for me because I was there a lot to see some of these relationships that we had go on and actually win the World Series. When you talk about Alex Bregman, this kid's grandfather or his great-grandfather came over on a boat, snuck over on a boat. And what if he wouldn't have done that? What if he wouldn't have done that for his family's legacy? That his grandson or great-grandson, I'm not sure what it was, but became a World Series champion. He was just in Fresno, playing here in Fresno, and humble as can be. Same kid that he was here was on television watching worldwide winning that World Series. So what it's going to do for us is that, to me, new ownership is new structure. It's a new future. With any change, change is good to me. So I, I really appreciate what Chris has done for us. I appreciate what the Carberries did for us to, to take the chance to get it done. And now with new ownership, they're in the game, they're in the business of baseball. So that's exciting. When will that new ownership take over? When will it be finalized? Uh, I can't answer when it'll be finalized. I know it's going to be very soon. It could be before the new season. Uh, we're not sure. We're not sure, but it's like with anything, uh, there's a process. And as that process is finalized and those details, but we'll, we'll be hearing soon. And to me, it's one of the best opportunities for this relationship that we're going to have that we could ever ask for. Yeah, and, and uh, the process takes so long because everything has to be approved by Major League Baseball? or it's or Yeah, what? through Minor League Baseball, Major, ma Major League. League Baseball, through the Astros affiliation, too, they have uh, say in it, too. There's a lot of people in the process, the PCL, Pacific Coast oh, League. Okay. So there's rules and regulations there, too. And in the city, to me, one of the big things that we, again, we have, uh, that we have a better relationship with the city. Uh, the messaging out there for years is, oh, we couldn't pay the rent, then Chichancy, and then all these things were happening. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, we never lost focus to keep just driving forward and doing what we need to do and build that relationship with the city. So when the process would come, we wouldn't scare away a potential owner because the opportunity really is good. We got one of the best ballparks. Downtown is changing. Uh, San Jose. I look at San Jose years ago. And then I look at where Fresno is, like where San Jose was. Yeah. We're changing like they are. Portland, same thing. Austin, Texas, same thing. That I'm seeing Sacramento that. Sacramento has Sacramento, changed. same thing. So we're there. We're a little behind the curve, but it's happening for us. And the, the stadium was sort of the pioneer with its arrows in the back, came in first and was hoping to be the fix-all. Just like they say, Fulton Street's going to be the fix-all. It's not. There's a three-year, four-year process to this, but everybody that believes in it has got to get behind. It. Not everybody's going to believe in it, and I don't think they should. Yeah. But the ones that get it should yeah. act and should move forward and be a part of it. See, i got to go to break, but here's the thing that I always think about, because uh, people do complain about the stadium, oh, it's too costly, it's too this, but can you imagine downtown Fresno in this day and age without that stadium? If that stadium wasn't there, what would it be? Would it yeah. be just a dirt field, a concrete parking lot? What would it be, and what would downtown be? 
without the stadium. I'm not saying this stadium is the centerpiece. You have to have a lot of centerpieces to, yes. for downtown. Yes. But imagine downtown without the stadium. If we wouldn't have had it, if we wouldn't have took risk. And a lot of people Man. say in business, uh, you got to be, uh, I don't like to take risk or I don't like to gamble. Then you're, you need to rethink business because business is risk and it is a gamble. And sometimes you have to roll the dice. Every business yeah. is a risk. It's a risk and there is gamble. And, and we did do it with the stadium and, to me, it's it's a crown jewel. Some people call it the Green Cathedral, and it really is fun. If you're not a baseball fan, and I'll share this quick story. There's an older couple, two older couples are going down the stairwell one night. I had to call the owner right away. I was excited to hear the story. And a little lady told the two couples, the wives were walking together, said, you know what? I wasn't a baseball fan when Earl asked me to be out here. Uh, but she said... Uh, but I think I've become a Fresno Grizzly fan tonight. I love that Parker, Parker, our mascot. And I think I like I like the Grizzlies. I wasn't a baseball fan, and I hate watching it on TV, but I want to come out to more games. That's what it's all about. It's family entertainment. It's coming out and relaxing. You go to a major sporting event or a concert, you're on the edge of your seat. When you watch yeah. minor league baseball, you're sitting back. Unless you're at Game 5 of the World Series, you're not going to sit. Yeah. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. The difference between L.A. and Houston, you go to Dodger Stadium, and you see all the stars are there. There's no question about it. Oh, uh, Larry King, elite. you see Mary Hart, you see the other Hollywood stars. Did you stars see Larry there. King ever get out of his seat? <laughs> no, I don't think he ever stood up. <laughs> he didn't move. Even when he, the Dodgers he were winning. He ate peanuts, and that's about it. <laughs> no, he just stood there with a stoic, or sat there with a stoic face, his glasses yeah. on. I saw yeah. him. But uh, you had so many Hollywood. I saw Magic there. Uh, they had a whole host of Hollywood celebrities. Jason Bateman. That, yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. right. Uh, but you go to Houston, and it's completely different. You go to San Francisco completely different you go to boston completely different yeah. so uh 436 me tv option 11 when we come back you mentioned fulton street we'll talk about fulton we'll show the reopening of that street in just a moment call in we have an open line when you're looking for whirlpool innovation and quality who has the answers the selection the price ventura tv appliance with billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined, we'll help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. Back here on the program, you can call in and weigh in about the Grizzlies or downtown. Let's roll the videotape. It's called Fulton Street Reopening Number One. We'll talk over this uh, and find out what happened on October the 21st. This was the reopening. You'll see here in a moment, uh, Lance, that uh, in the car, left part of your screen, there's yeah, Mayor Lee Brand. And there's Savak right the there, dead center in the back of his head. Savak, the owner of the Pacific Southwest building. Yes. With Craig Sharn, I think, standing right there. Yes. I Mayor know. Ashley the, Swearingen Ashley on the left. Ashley Swearingen yeah. right there next to Lee Brand. Yeah, and so, our current okay, mayor. You, you mentioned that just a few minutes ago that Fulton Street was not going to be the key or the, the, the end all or be all. Absolutely. To the key to downtown Fresno, why not? I mean, it's a it's a huge thing to open up this street. And it's it's with anything and with a business, you, you can ask you the same question: Why isn't that one decision going to be the cure all? Um, it's not like buying a lottery ticket because you buy it, you win. <laughs> you have to make the effort. So the first step in this is being able to get them all open. And what right. I'm seeing, this is what I'm seeing, because I right. I'm one of those. I go the next day. Who's down there the next day? And are, is there traffic down there? Ever since this mall's been open, there's our good buddy Sal Quintero. Sal's a great guy. Yeah. They, uh, on the street, there's been traffic. People are curious. So you They're went driving. there the next day. Oh, absolutely. And there was traffic. Yes. And okay. I will go back to the March on the Mall. Remember years ago they did the March on the Mall? Ashley yeah. Swearingen wasn't present. Or present. She wasn't mayor at the time. You know, I'm talking about her future was now. It, was it? Patterson or Autry? The it was Autry. It was, was Autry, Autry at the time. And they did Autry, the march okay. from Fulton Mall, and they walked all the way yeah, to yeah, City yeah. Hall. Later that night, I was down there with Gene Hagenson with ABC 30, and it was a ghost town. <laughs> there was nobody. Right. They're talking right. about all this excitement, and no one came back and partied. <laughs> I was so mad. I well, remember. Alan never got his lake downtown. Yeah. 
<laughs> Lake, uh, Lake Autry. Yeah. So they did that. So with this, I'm seeing there's a whole new excitement. And if you were there that night in there's Fulton Parker, Street, by the way. <laughs> there's Parker, Fresno <laughs> Grizzly Parker. But being down on that street, the electricity, there had to be 20,000 people down there. Yeah, that's what and, I heard. And all the restaurants and what they did was very smart. And I don't know if it was Craig's doing, but they did pop-up locations. It was a pop-up wine bar and a pop-up coffee shop. And it made you dream a little bit because you have to dream before you, you see well, what, what, the future. What needs to happen now? Yeah, I, you know, we've had a lot of talk on this show, and, and a lot of it's been, oh, why reopen the street? You know, oh, why yeah, did you absolutely. leave it the way it was? You know, it was federal money, by the way. It wasn't. Yes. We didn't have to take it out of the city coffers. It was federal money. Yeah. Okay. So. I believe the Tiger Grant or something. Yeah. Something of that nature. But yeah. but um, okay. So now you have this street open. You're a business guy. Yeah. Um, what has to happen now? Because you still have a lot of naysayers out there. What's the next step at, from your business perspective? What has to happen now that that street is open? One, one of the things that I was seeing is a lot of property owners. People were, I, I kicked myself five years ago. I wish I'd have bought a building downtown. Uh, you can't, <laughs> Don't we you, all? You can't touch one now. I mean, is they're right? so hard to get a hold of. Is it because it's too expensive? No, because people see the forest through the trees. I think they, they see the potential. They see that potential and they see that it could be uh, what happened in Portland. It could be what happened in Austin. It could be happened in San Jose and Sacramento, that they see that future. And these property owners that uh, have the capital are making those investments because they know the future's coming. Yeah. My concern is that they have to do something with that property. And What do they, they have to do? Well, they have to court the right businesses to go down and believe and see again that forest through the trees. Take a little risk, but at the same time, go in with them on that risk yeah. to be able to say, I'm going to support you through this process. Uh, take, and I'm going to call people out, you know, elbow room. We love elbow room. And I know Mike Serenian and I don't want to give I away anything. So, yeah. And Mike got such a visionary and knows restaurant business um, and loves downtown. Serves up a good meal. Once Serves a up a good meal. Yeah. <laughs> and loves downtown. So go work with him and look what Cosmo, you know, with Do you think he could doing. open up a second location downtown? I'm like talking about a small, Sheridan. Like a lunch place uh, or a place to go grab cocktails like a, in the like afternoon. Like elbow room number two? Yeah, or like a Riley's. Uh, he has the Riley's that's out on Temperance. Something like that. So what I saw with these pop-up stores is I was thinking of ideas on, of all these it. businesses that would be great to go in and be there. Um because I would hang out down there. It would be great. I, the city has done a great job, and I'll give a lot of credit to Ashley and then Mayor Brand continuing that effort, but in making it easier for businesses to operate in that corridor, in that area, and yeah. help with the permitting process and get things moving faster. Yeah. Uh, Craig's been a Pied Piper of it, uh, and I know that uh, he fights for those businesses to help support them, too. Maybe speed up the permitting process, uh, which has Absolutely. been a complaint of a lot of people in the city, that they need to speed it up a yeah. little bit and let let businesses kind of open up without any red tape. Or to have, uh, you go to Cheesecake Factory up at Fashion Fair and you can sit outside and have a glass of wine and have your meal and watch people walk by. Uh, you need to do that down on Fulton Street too. A lot of people though, why would you want to do that? Well, if you were there on that day when it opened, uh, the 21st, that everybody was doing it. I mean, you didn't have a chair, you were finding a chair. I'll get to you in a moment, caller, but I need to ask this question because people always make the comparisons. As a business person, mm -hmm. um, and, and by the way, Lance Cardoza is with the Business Street Media Group, and uh, he knows business. So I, it's, it's hard for me to put my brain around comparisons. Everybody compares downtown. Well, why isn't it like River Park? Well, why isn't it like, um, um, you know, um, other parts of North Fresno? Why isn't it like the Tower District? Uh, so shouldn't downtown Fresno just forget about the comparisons and just build something and evolve something downtown that has its own character? Yeah, it has its own identity. Yeah. And most cities that have been very successful with this have figured that out, uh, such as San Jose and these different yeah. ones that said that we can't force... Uh, what we did when uh, the mall was the shopping area, then they went to yeah. Manchester, then Fashion Fair. Because downtown is not a mall. It's yeah. downtown. It's downtown. It's got to create yeah. its own identity. Its right? own identity. So it's it's starting from scratch, doing something new. But I will say this that I thought was really amazing. If you haven't been to Fulton Street, a lot of the argument was the art. What are we going to do with this amazing art? And a lot of people went, ah, it looks junky. Yeah, it was not being taken care of. They have done an amazing job restoring that art and the waterways downtown and water features around the art. 
That was beautiful. I wanted to take just time taking pictures of some of that art because uh, they did a great job. And when yeah. I go to other cities that are really good like this, uh, you would talk about uh, Riverside. Riverside also with their downtown took art and spread it amongst this this uh, street. Yeah. Uh, and to me, it gives you something to look at as you're cruising around. But you do need businesses to support it, businesses to be behind it. And some of our most successful ones in town, we need to work with them. They know what they're doing and come in and have them tell us what they think. Caller, you're on the air with Lance Cardoza. What do you say about downtown Fresno now that the Fulton Street is is open and ready to go? Yeah, Lance, I think it's great. Uh, you know, uh, you, it, it's like John said, uh, you can't compare, you know, uh, River Park and, you know, State Garden. Uh, the identity and what they did, I mean, it, it's, myself, I think it's beautiful. And I think if people realize not to compare uh, one to another, but, you know what, I, I think the, the thing that's going to make it is having coffee shops or whatever, if you can get some, you know, uh, the, the stadium. That stadium, if they can get it full, now that the Houston Astros won and all that, and, and I, I, I believe that the, uh, the Grizzlies are part of the, you know, because they have a lot of those players that they used to play with the Grizzlies there yeah. and, and and now the majors. Sure. But if you can just uh, not compare uh, what was here before, you know, with the Giants and whatnot, it's gonna it's gonna draw a lot of people. You know, we gotta you gotta get it entrepreneurs, all these young people, uh, you know, a good apartments and whatnot. I'm not trying to put anybody down with apartments, but you have to get people drawn to that stadium where they can walk around and be safe. What do you think? Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Good, good, good question. Caller, you. you're yeah, right. What about being safe? Being a safe. Have said. And a lot, of, a lot of things, it's uh, it's sometimes to dispel the myth. That's what I like to always talk about. We love to go to San Francisco. And we love to spend 40, 50 bucks to park and walk five blocks. And here we want to park like right in front of the place. Uh, and those same. And not spend <clears throat> any money. <laughs> yeah, not spend any money. But you talk about safety. I would say you'd be more concerned where the tourists and the high traffic areas and where a lot of those issues occur. Uh, downtown, there's nobody here. <laughs> That's after five, the streets roll up and everybody heads out of town, unfortunately. And having more of a focus downtown, yeah. yes, money will be moving around downtown. Our police, uh, I know, are very focused on making sure people are safe and they were very focused that night. Uh, but as we start to have eating where you can eat outside you can enjoy like tioga sequoia these brewing the trail the ale trail that they're going to do full circle brewing they're transforming those areas like over in chinatown hang on caller get to you in a moment house of pendragon i think we have six local brewers now that have craft beer you yeah. look at sacramento similar in size they have 60 craft brewing places so you can only imagine it could be a craft brewing tasting room in the evening yeah. you're you going to get work. one of those guys on my show here right oh absolutely we'll get them <laughs> over one? here i don't know which one i, I will bring full circle brewing you know they're okay. selling stock okay. in the business you can own wow. you, you can, can own, own a piece <laughs> of craft beer so if you dream about it and you want to be a part of it you can still do it All right, maybe in december we can get full circle on here. oh that'd be great i'll I get arthur lead time i'll or, get or arthur moy on but, here hey it right sounds away. like before i take this call here lance it sounds like from your experience it sounds like the business owners yeah. here in the city of fresno and the city has already taken the risk it sounds like the business owners now, it's up to them to step up and take a risk as well. Absolutely. Right? Everybody That's has to. That's going to be the key, yeah. right? Yes. It's not the fix-all. Everybody think of the Fulton Streets, the silver bullet. It's the, one the city step can't fix forward. Everything, no. Right? They've laid the groundwork. They've said they're going to work with these businesses. Now it's the building owners and the downtown partnership, which is yeah. uh, the PBID, there to start to work with starting to mold what it's going to be downtown. Yeah. And it's not just them, it's everybody else that are successful business people in Fresno that believe in Fresno. And if you believe in Fresno, let's say you're up at River Park or in Fig Garden Village, you're out in Clovis, even in Clovis people believe in Fresno sometimes. I don't like to admit it, but I live in Clovis, but <laughs> we all love Fresno. <laughs> so with Fresno, uh, if you believe in it, your heart of your city is your downtown. Yeah. And when people come to your city, 
from outside the area. Yeah. They like to look at your downtown. Yeah. And when your heart isn't healthy, what happens to the rest of the body? Like when Amazon comes in, now let's see your downtown. How does it look? Absolutely. So, and that's the other thing. Ultra Beauty, Amazon, and what the EDC is doing with the Fresno County. And you've had Leon, Leanne on the show. Oh, yeah, Leanne's they're been do, here. They're doing amazing things. Uh, so the future is very ripe to uh, for the picking of the fruit. And it's going to happen downtown as a big piece in this puzzle. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air with Lance Cardoza. Yes, I would. Uh, I would like to see more uh, restaurants in the downtown area, and also modification on those parking meters, so that we could have more time, uh, and we don't have to worry about uh, having a citation from the city. That wouldn't work out. Yeah, yeah, and that's something that a lot of people say. Thank you. They have great comments like that, and I like I like that. And I always say to people, instead of being like the Astros, instead of letting the negative take you in the hole and cost you the game, what do you do about it? What do you do as a team? And you find like-minded people, so people call her that uh, believe in the same things that you believe in and say, yeah, that's right. Well, we have a city council, and that city council, we hire that council. We need to go in front of them, and we need to talk to them, and we need to bring solutions to the problem or ask for some solutions yeah. or some discussion. But it's a lot of, to me, it's really good when you bring a solution, you know, when you have some answers, because when you bring some answers, that means you, you've thought about this, you care about this, and if it pencils out and it starts making sense, the city's going to be all about it. So I would say go to your city council on Thursdays and get up in front of your city council and make your statement and talk to your council members um, and make a move to uh, look at stuff like that. So they're always open to that. They don't, you can voice your opinion. Voice your opinion. Go to your Fresno County supervisors if something's in your county. Don't just complain about things. I, I hate, hate the ones that just complain. You talk about the successful sports people. You take in those negative thoughts. What do you do with them? How do you process yeah. that? Or when something doesn't go right in your life or business, what do you do next? That's the most important thing. Hey, another call coming in here. Uh, let's take this one. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air with Lance Cardoza. This is a 415 area code. Go ahead. Hello. Um, I, I think that the uh, downtown storehouse is safe to the old image of it. It was unsafe to be down there. I think once you uh, get more police down there or more fire security, I think the people will start showing up. So uh, Especially now with the uh, Houston uh, Houston winning, I think, you know, when the summer comes, it, you know, you're going to start having a lot more people showing up. Because there's already a buzz out here in the South Valley about, going back down there, you know, because it's revitalized and it's beautiful. Yeah. A lot of people say it's beautiful down there. Well, yeah. well, one of the things that I've always thank heard, you, being, yeah, think it being a downtown business owner, because I, you know, I've been in downtown since Sandra King had the old Security Bank building. She's the one that first introduced me to downtown, I think 2003 or four, I don't know, and said, uh, come see this, you know, and I saw the future, like, wow, this really could be something nice. And the stadium with the car brace, and I wanted to be a part of it, and I stuck it out. So I've seen the, the best and the worst, mm -hmm. and this is the only time, and I would say ever, that I feel that Hang the best the future is there. But like the caller was saying, too, is security is, uh, we're all on security detail these days. Yeah. And I think you have to be prepared around your surroundings all the time. And I'm not going to name places, but some of the the high traffic of fluent areas in Fresno sometimes can be the most dangerous places in Fresno because yeah. crooks prey on people with money. And where yeah. are they with money? Not necessarily downtown, but as it becomes more successful, yeah. the craft brewers start having more traffic. Yes, the police are going to be focused on that. More bicycle cops, too. I love the bicycle cops. Yeah, downtown. I love those, I love too. it. I love yeah, it. I even love them because I lived in, on the East Coast for, for quite a while. They had people on horseback. We had so horses even, out there. Yeah, I night. wouldn't even, I wouldn't mind seeing horsebacks downtown, but, yeah. you know, officers riding horseback. But here's the key that I see before I go to this call here. Hang on, Calder. I see uh, a couple of things here as downtown evolves. You, I think you're right. I think you need a guy like Sherinian and other very experienced, successful business owners yes. being consultants for downtown and maybe even offering up uh, a little bit of their own downtown in terms of taking a risk and maybe opening up a second business. But mainly, what is their advice as a consultant? What do we do to build this up? Because they're the ones that have that have been in the trenches for years. Guys like Sherinian and other places that have yeah. been in business a long time in Fresno that probably may hold the key to downtown success. 
And again, yes. And at the same time, if they don't engage, were they there on the 21st? That would be my first question. Did they sort of see but what it could be? But it doesn't have to be, be Shireen. There are other experienced others. There are others, business yeah. owners. A and, lot of them out there. And I will tell you, that, that day I saw the most media I've ever seen on their off day. Just right. hanging out. I hung out with a bunch of uh, ponchos, and we, right. you know, we we uh, had a good time. So, and it was it was seeing that, and I saw a lot of business owners just sort of but, looking around. But just look no further than Ventura TV. We have owner Mark Sheeran here. Yeah, this place has been here since 1951. Get his advice. Absolutely. Get other business owners that have been around for a long time. Yeah, uh, and get their advice as to what will make downtown work. And I think what, and that would be a really good thing that we would look at Craig Sharton to organize, Sharton, yeah. to pull together these people. And I really think, I think their advice would be great. And a lot of times yeah. too is an open mind, because you know what works in your business because you've been doing it. And yep. sometimes they hate change. Once it's right. working, don't fix it. But you right. got You got to get into it. And hey, look as at we it. as we take this call, uh, Carrie, before we take the call, can you roll the videotape on Fulton Street reopening number two? And then after you do that, we'll take the call. And as I'm I'm waiting for that call to be popped up here, yeah, there's the crowd. They're dancing in the streets. And have, when was the last time you saw this? Never. Um, but caller, you're on the air with Lance Cardoza. Go ahead. Hi, John. Hi, Lance. I know it's towards the end of your show, so I'll make my question really quick. We're starting to see these BRT stations all around downtown, even, I think, along the strip where you guys' the studios are located. Yeah. Um, have you guys looked at what the impact is? Is this going to be a good thing for the stadium, for the, just for the, I mean, any any comments regarding that? I know you're kind of limited on time. So yeah, and don't forget, caller, we got a soccer team coming in too. Correct. Yeah. I'm just curious. I know that the high speed rail is on the way, but that could be a number of years before that's done, and I'm looking forward to that. But um, just want to see if there's going to be any immediate impact with this BRT. Okay. Thanks. Good. Good, good call. Yeah, you got yeah. BRT, maybe high speed rail years to come, but then. The, the immediate impact will be the soccer team coming in, too. Yeah, the soccer team is going to draw a lot of people, and they answer the caller's question. I think we need a good infrastructure of transportation. I love going oh. to cities that have great transportation. So BRT might be good. Uh, BRT is great, and FAX is great. Have you ever ridden FAX in a hot summer day? That is the most I coolest have. spot I've ever been in my Inside life. Inside the bus? Oh, it's like an <laughs> icebox. But when was the last time you saw people dancing in downtown Fresno? And a, and a concert. Thousands. There was a concert going on at night. It was, John, it was, if, if you weren't there, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it was a great experience. It was emotional for a person like me. I've been here there for a long time, but yeah. I walked by myself and just walked down the mall and just ran into people constantly but it was an experience and it finally it's like when you have that relative that all of a sudden they're out of the hospital and they're doing better and their heart's healthy that's what i felt so about are the city. those naysayers did you, you know, when you were out there did they start to come around yeah, I saw naysayers saw, out saw there. Saw a lot of naysayers. A lot, saying, hey, of, a lot yeah. of naysayers that said, "Ah, well, it won't work, or that's not going to be the fix-all." And it was, uh, and I did see. Hey, I, saw saw, the... I saw some KMJ people out there, and I won't say who they were, but they were to. cruising along, and their eyeballs are going back and forth, like, "What is going on? This so is starting amazing." Starting to turn the corner a little bit, huh? Yeah, and just going, "This is amazing. This is what's happening." And the mouth of Kern, when you look at the mouth of the stadium. The, the artwork that's right there and the opportunity for those buildings around there. And I know Savak and some others have some buildings there. Uh, Terrence Frazier has done some investment down yeah. there. That, hey, how about uh, there's getting some great him on stuff. the show, by the way? Can you, can, oh, can you bring Terrence great. on the show with you? Yeah, Ter oh, it would be wild. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Terrence is a lot of fun. He's a ball of fire. But, yeah, we can make that we happen. We don't have enough time for this call. Caller, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer the call, but we can't take it on the air because we're out of time. I apologize. Uh, but um, you can call back tomorrow. How's that? Thank you for calling. All right, caller. Uh, I put on neon from the stadium. All right. We got to go. We're out of time, right, Kerry? 30 seconds left or less. Okay. We got 10 seconds. Lance, I'm not going to shake your hand because I know you're not uh, feeling too well. Yeah, I'm not well. feeling too well. But thank you for coming in. We'll have Full Circle Brewery on. We'll get Lance yeah. in here. Uh, we'll get you back in here at some point. That'd be great. I'd All love right. to. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All right. And thank you for the callers. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you for your time and your service to downtown Fresno. All right. And to the Grizzlies. Uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow with David Taub and Doug Vagum. We'll talk about maybe a teacher strike. I don't know. Who knows? Only the teachers know. Back tomorrow. Have a great day, especially if you're an Astros fan. <laughs>